Hello and welcome to Offsiders. Sydney, so this is the New South Wales push to create a racing carnival to sit somewhere on par with the Melbourne Cup Carnival in the spring in Melbourne. Uh, the weather is always such a critical part in all of this at this time of year, and so it was. Just under 24, uh, just under 25,000 people attended. And before we get to the actual races, which, you know, that's the forefront of it, but like Melbourne in spring, that can't be the front line, it's the event and it's the way that it captures a town and draws people together. Has the championships done this in Sydney? Is it in the, the general consciousness? One thing I was told by the people at the club during the week is they wanted to make this very different event to the Melbourne Spring Carnival, which the cynical might mean suggests that no one will turn up, <laughs> a very Sydney event. But. Um, I'm, I'm, it's very hard to tell. I mean, the advertising, the promotion's been first class. They've just really thrown heaps of money at this. It's like $18 million in prize money over two meetings. They've pumped it up. They got, I think it was 24900 at the course yesterday. Apparently the atmosphere was good. It was a wet day. They did well. And, of course, we had the um, Tommy Berry winning, the, which gave it a, a nice touch, a, a romantic touch at the end of the carnival, I suppose. But I'm not sure if it worked as a day. I'd... Charlie, you were there. Uh, I was there. Um, I think it did work, uh, really, when yeah. people could get outside and kind of watch yeah. the thing and not be stuck inside uh, away from the rain. Um, noticeable at the airport, though, there wasn't any... There was no mention of the championships at all. In Melbourne, I think, at spring carnival time, sort of the city as a whole gets behind the racing. And I didn't get that feeling really in Sydney. And I, I'm sure, you know, it's, it's year one, they'll kind of refine their marketing campaigns. But I just felt that it was kind of a little pocket of racing in Randwick and the rest of the city that wasn't is, really aware of it. That is Sydney, though. It's the old thing about yeah. when you go to cover the US Open tennis in New York, you wouldn't know it's on. <laughs> and Sydney's a yeah. bigger city and things get more absorbed. So you've got to give it that slack in a way. Melbourne is obsessed by the events that are on and they're part of the, every conversation so it is different. And also the ease I think in Melbourne it's very easy to go to a sports event and to be able to get in and get out wet and horrible most people stay inside so 24,000 is actually a really good crowd on a wet day in Sydney yeah. and I think um, it, it will build you know if they're prepared to see this through and to keep pushing it the way they're doing it it will build and it will become an event and I think a lot of people that went yesterday people that don't generally or, or haven't previously spent very much time at a race track and so the crit now will be able to convince them to come back again and to make it part of their their you know weekly intake. There is a public holiday in Melbourne obviously of course for the Melbourne mm. Cup um, and it's in November at a time when there's no other football codes to yep. compete with it. And the racing itself was absolutely first class. The Doncaster Mile which was the main event. Trainer here Chris Waller trained the first four over the line, which is one of the most phenomenal achievements in racing history. Sacred Falls won the race, second year running, so that's a feat in itself. But uh, the first four there is Waller is, uh, is, he's already made a name for himself, but that's his crowning moment. Um, the sprinter, uh, Lankan Rupee, who won the TJ Smith stakes, uh, he's as good as any horse in the world over the uh, over the 1,200 metre trip. He's put together the Oakley Plate, the New Market, and now the TJ in just incredible style. It was said that he hooned around the wet track, and that seemed a pretty apt description to me. But um, the moment that you mentioned, Richard, was when Tommy Berry uh, won the Chairman's, which was uh, one of the undercard races, a Group 2 race, and this was the first race he'd won since the death of his brother, Nathan. Uh, and I'm sure these are the moments that will probably uh, define this day as it, uh, as it goes on and is, is relived. Um, beautiful scenes there with Tommy Berry.